Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight, in grade 5, we are working on module 2, lesson number 10, and tonight we are multiplying decimal fractions. We've previously not been using decimals. We're multiplying decimal fractions with tenths by multi-digit whole numbers using our place value understanding, and we're recording partial products. So let's take a look at what that means for us uh, today. Let's take a look at a couple problems from tonight's homework. The first problem, I'm going to read the directions here, but we're going to be using the area model that we've been using previously, as well as the standard algorithm. And the only difference between these problems and the problems from uh, last week are that we're dealing with different units, in this case decimal units. Um, but everything else remains the same, so let's, let's try to see what we've got here. We've got estimate the product. Solve using an area model and the standard algorithm. Remember to express your products in standard form. Awesome. Let's take a look at 1B. 1B asks us to look at 2.1 or 2 and 1 tenth times 82. And the first thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to estimate the product. So I'm going to look here at my biggest unit. Let's see, that's in the 1's uh, place value. Let's see, is this closer to 2 or is this closer to 3? Uh, let's see, oh, it's much closer to 2. So I'm going to estimate that this is much like 2. Here, let me get to a bigger pencil here. There we go, 2. And on my second number here, I'm going to look at 82. So my, again, my biggest unit is my tens place. So is it going to be 8 tens or 9 tens? So I look over here to the ones place. That's real small, well under 5. So I think it's going to be 8 tens or 80. And now I can go ahead and do that. Uh, that is a mental math problem, right? I can take these two products and, and find it out. So let's see, what is the product of 2 and 80? Let's see, 2 and 8 tens, that would be 16 tens or 160. And I've got a pretty good estimate now of what I should be looking for when I finish my problem. Now, next part up, right, we're supposed to solve using an area model and the standard algorithm. So let's see, the area model tells me that I should go ahead and draw, let's see, draw my box here. And let's see, I've got my 82, so I'm going to break that down into 2 plus 80 on this side. And then the only thing that's a little weird, that's a little weird, a little different from what we've been doing in the past, right, is in the past we would have broken down this number across the top. We do the same thing. The only difference is that we break it down into 2 plus 1. But you know what? We could express this all in tenths, right? So let's see. If this is 1 tenth, then how many tenths is this? Oh, that's 20 tenths, right? So that's 20 tenths. 20 tenths is the same as one whole, as two whole, sorry, and one tenth is right here. But we just have to remember that we're working in tenths now, so we actually put that here, tenths, along the side. Let's actually start to solve it with our partial products. Let's see. Again, we're working in tenths, so we've got 2 times 20. Well, that would be 40, right? Let's see. And then our next uh, little quadrant here, we've got 2 times 1, and that's simple. That's just 2. Then we've got 80 times 20, okay, so that's 8 tens times 2 tens, so that'd be 16 hundreds, right? And let's see, finally we've got 80 times 1, oh, that's real simple, that's just this. And then we can go ahead and add across, let's see, we're going to add them together, create a partial product here, so that would be 42 tenths. Sorry for my handwriting, that's not too bad actually. And on this one, let's see, we've got... 1,680, so 1,680 tenths. So again, as long as we're clear that we're working in tenths, we can go ahead and do the simple place value uh, multiplication here that we use in our, in, our, uh, in our area model. So let's take a look at the standard algorithm, how that would work. So let's see, again, with all of our standard algorithm problems, they set it up this way, same as we always would. But again, they've done one extra thing, which is they converted 2.1, 2 and 1 tenth, into 21 tenths. So we're going to do the standard algorithm, and then we're going to remember that the answer that we got is actually in tenths, and then convert that back to regular uh, standard form. So let's see, 2 times 1 in the first place, let's see, so that would be 2. And then 2 times 4 would be 4. And as long as we remember that that's tenths, we actually have, look, the same thing, 42 tenths, 42 tenths over here. Let's go ahead to our next place value. We're going to need to distribute our 8 times 1. Let's see, that would be 80. And 8 times 2 would be 16. Go ahead and add those together. Sorry, it's getting a little cramped here. Yeah, I'm noticing something else, though, right? 1,680 is exactly the same as our other partial product, 1,680 over here. So we go ahead and do our addition. Let's see, there's 2, 2, 7, 1. 
okay. But then again, we have to remember this is tenths, right? So this is 1,722 tenths. So if we convert that back into ones, we would need to move our place value. Every, every digit would go one place value to the right, and we'd end up with 172.1, 172 and two tenths. And now the last part that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look back at our estimate to see if what we got looks pretty close to the estimate we generated at the beginning. And I look back to our estimate, and our estimate was that we would be something like 160. And sure enough, we're at 172 uh, and 2 tenths. We're very close, and so now I'm quite confident that the standard algorithm that we did, uh, once we converted the number uh, into tenths, and remembered that our answer was in tenths, and then converted it back to standard form, um, we've got our answer. And I'm pretty convinced that that's going to be correct. Awesome. Let's take a look at one more problem from tonight's homework. Problem number two asks us to do the following. Estimate, then use the standard algorithm to solve. Express your products in standard form. Okay, well, let's see. We've got to first estimate, and we're going to look at 2B. We're going to estimate 65 times 5 and 8 tenths. So 65, again, I look at my biggest unit, which is tens. I think to myself, is that closer to 6 tens or 7 tens? Well, gosh, 65 is exactly halfway between, and we know that when we're exactly halfway in between, we round up. So I'm going to say that that's closest to seven tens, so that's seven tens. And then I'm gonna look at my decimal number here, five and eight tenths. So my biggest unit is my ones. Is that closer to five or closer to six? Oh, it's much closer to six, right? It's just two tenths away from six. So I'm gonna say that that's six are, is a good estimate. Again, we are cued that our, this is, we're estimating here because we have our squiggly uh, equal sign. And then let's see. 70 times 6, or 7 tens times 6. Well, 7 times 6 is 42, but it's 42 tens, so we'd be close to 420. So here's our estimate, 420. When we go ahead and do our standard algorithm, we should come up with an answer that is in the neighborhood of 420. So let's see how that works. They've set up our standard algorithm already, and they've reminded us that they've converted four, 5 and 8 tenths into 58 tenths. So basically they just decomposed the five ones into 50 tenths plus the eight tenths they already had to make 58 tenths. And when we get down to the end of our standard algorithm, we'll have to remember that we're working in tenths and then convert back. So let's see, how would we do this standard algorithm? Let's see, we do five times eight. Five times eight is 40. I would record that this way, a zero with a four under the, just above the, the uh, partial product. Let's see, 5 times 5 is 25, plus the 4 that I already have is 29. 29, and I go ahead and scratch out that 4 because I've used that up now. Okay, next up, let's see, 6 tens times 8 would be 48 tens. 48 tens would go like this. We record our 4 underneath there like that. Four, that's 48 tens. And then finally, 6 times 5 would be 30 hundreds, plus the 4 we already have would be 34 hundreds. 34, and I cross out that 4 so I don't get that messed up. So let's go ahead and add up our partial products. In our 1's place, we have 0 plus 0 is 0. In our 10's place, we have 9 plus 8 is 17. I record like that. In our 100's place, we have 2 plus 4 plus 1. And see, now you remember why we went ahead and crossed those out so we don't count them up again. 2 plus 4 plus 1 would be 7. And then we just have our 1000's place, which is just the 3. And so our answer is 3,770, but it's not 3,770 ones, it's 3,770 tenths. So when we convert back to standard form, we're going to need to go ahead and move everything one place value to the right. And so our thousands become hundreds, our hundreds become tens, our tens become ones, and our ones become tenths. And our answer is 377. And now the question is, are we in the neighborhood of the estimate that we created. And we're not too far off, right? 377 is not too far away from 420. Um, we're, uh, we're in the neighborhood, and so that gives us more confidence that, in fact, we've done our standard algorithm problem correctly. Awesome. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you've realized that much of the work that you've done in the past sets you up for success in this particular lesson because as you're getting better and better at the standard algorithm, adding decimals doesn't really change uh, the work, the main work that you're doing. There's only one little extra step and that's converting um, our decimals into, uh, into unit form and into a unit form that helps us and then making sure we convert our answers back into standard form. So I hope you've, joined, you've enjoyed this lesson episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Take care.